Welcome back. We continue our back to school segment with some input from our teachers. Joining us now for our teachers panel, Deborah Gatrell, a social studies teacher in the Granite School District, and Alexandra Castellano Smith. She teaches Spanish, English, and Latinos in Action in the Weber School District. Welcome to uh, both of you. Glad to have you with us. Let's start off with uh, how teachers are feeling about uh, coming back to school. Really important input from you. Deborah, let's start with you. Well, I think we're excited. Uh, we're looking forward to something that looks a little bit more normal after the last year plus. Um, it's, it's not a perfect year, but it's definitely going to be better than last year. So we're looking forward to that, getting back in the classroom, having kids again, and uh, starting fresh. Mm -hmm. It's always good to have a fresh start. Yeah, definitely. Uh, Alexander, your thoughts on heading back to school. How are you feeling as we're now just days away? Yes, uh, we're feeling very excited. Uh, I'm happy to see my students again and ready to get back in the swing of learning and getting the kids up and ready and ready to go for the next school year. Mm -hmm. uh, if you could, both of you, give us a little background on, on what it was like from your perspective last year on the front lines teaching our children. Uh, last year was pretty rough. It was uh, a very difficult, we weren't exactly prepared for that. I don't think anybody was. Mm -hmm. it, how do you prepare for that, right? Uh, but teachers demonstrated a lot of resilience and so do students and staff at figuring it out. Like we rolled with the punches and we, we adjusted pretty quickly on the fly, had to pull together as teams and, and you know, work together to get done what needed to be done under very difficult circumstances. But I can tell you we're all a lot better at technology now than we were before. And a lot of those skills we're going to keep in the toolbox and continue using because they made us better teachers. Mm -hmm. Alexander, what, what are your thoughts uh, as you look back and reflect on what you learned last year? Yes, we learned a lot last year. It was a wild situation for all of us. Um, the students were really nice and, and malleable as we were going along. And as educators, we uh, thought on our feet a lot and were able to get through a lot of difficult situations and navigate all the way through from August until May mm -hmm. successfully. None of us have a crystal ball. We don't really see how that's going to uh, play out ultimately, but do you expect a more normal school year? Deborah, you, you alluded to that in your opening statement. Yeah, well, it, it won't be completely normal, um, but we're certainly back to something that's more normal because uh, at least in my district last year, we had four days in person and one day online. This year, we're going to be back five days in the classroom uh, without any distance learning. Uh, teachers won't have to teach in dual modalities, won't have to teach in person and online at the same time, so that's a nice change. Um, it, we're talking about having assemblies again and uh, just, just a more normal year, but we're still in a pandemic, so there's still gonna be some, some challenges and some changes, and, and we're probably gonna see outbreaks and have to do test to stay and, and deal with all the fallout from that, but it's gonna be a lot closer to normal than what we had last year, and that's, that's really exciting. So, Alexandra, what's your plan as a teacher for handling that potential uncertainty down the road? Uh, as for usual, we kind of deal with uncertainty all the time. Uh, we're pretty prepared to deal with whatever comes our way. We have mitigation strategies in place, so we're not really going from ground zero like we were last year. I think we're much more prepared to handle it this year. Uh, this has gotten very political, uh, no doubt about that. A as a teacher, and you sit and watch these political battles you know, play out in hearing rooms and with county councils and the legislature, what are your thoughts? Uh, it's really frustrating. Um, this never should have been politicized in the first place at any level um, because at the end of the day it's, it's about students and learning and, and how we can do that safely and that means we need as much as possible students to be in the classroom safely. And so you know, vaccinations are awesome and I hope everyone who can get one is getting them or has them and, and people who can, I hope that they're going to willingly you know, bear the minor inconvenience of a mask so we can reduce spread so we can keep kids in classrooms because the fact of the matter is we're still in a pandemic, it's still a problem, and the, the, the politics of it, it just shouldn't be a thing. We should be following the health experts like we should have been from the beginning, and that's what my district promised at the beginning. We would always follow the health recommendations, and we're kind of in a pickle now because the state law has changed in such a way that the board's hands are completely tied. We can't enforce any recommendations at this point. They're just suggestions, uh, and unless the mask mandate that was just issued by Salt Lake County is in fact upheld. If it's not, then everything is just a suggestion or recommendation and the board can't do what it promised to do, which was follow the guidance of public mm -hmm. health experts who are apolitical, who are just making the calls that'll be best for kids and keep us safe. Um, so it's frustrating. Alexander, your thoughts on that? Yes, it's become heavily political. Um, I think ultimately all of us are here for the students and we've been working really hard to make sure that their voices are being represented. And that means, you know, 
following whatever guidelines we need and what we see is necessary in order to make sure the kids are safe and that we keep kids in face-to-face -face learning as much as we possibly can. Yeah, I talk about that. We have about 45 seconds left. Uh, when you take a look at some of the challenges from last year, how do you maybe switch up your plan this year? We've got 30 seconds left. Deborah. Uh, switch up the plan. So I think we're going to keep everything that we learned last year that was good mm -hmm. and merge it with everything we were doing before that was good and come out with something even better. Okay. Unfortunately, we have run out of time. I'd like to get your thoughts on that as well, Alexander, but really appreciate both of you being here and sharing your perspective.